Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Tiramisu. That's right, there are 50 ways to leave your lover, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, we have to get the lover, and one great way would be to serve this gorgeous tiramisu to your sweetheart on Valentine's Day. And by the way, fun fact, this famous Italian dessert was actually invented as a snack for customers in a brothel. And if it was good enough for those Johns, it's good enough for this John. So let me show you how to put this together. And step one, we're gonna need some espresso and ideally freshly brewed. And of course, like most YouTube celebrities, I do have my own espresso maker at home. But if you don't, you really should go to the neighborhood cafe and actually buy a couple double shots of espresso. So it's really not gonna be as good using regular strong coffee, which a lot of recipes call for, instead of the espresso. All right, that coffee flavor is key here. Okay, so I brewed some up. I'm gonna pour that in a shallow bowl. And then to that, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of Marsala which is a slightly sweet Italian wine. Now, some people like to use dark rum for this or brandy or Bailey's. There's all kinds of liquors used. And I'll talk a little bit about that on the blog. But anyway, I'm gonna stir a couple tablespoons of Marsala into my espresso and we'll just set that aside until needed. All right, and then next up, we're gonna go ahead and separate two large eggs. We're gonna put the whites in one bowl and the two yolks in another. And as usual with these things, it's okay to get a little bit of white with the yolks, but never, never get a little bit of yolk with the whites. Otherwise, they're hard to whip into peaks. But anyway, we're going to separate two eggs, and then to the yolks, we're going to add some white sugar and another tablespoon of the aforementioned Marsala wine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop those two yolks for no reason. It's just fun. And then we're going to whisk this up until it's very thick and foamy and creamy but not on the counter. We're gonna take that over to the stove and place that over some water simmering on low. And we're gonna go ahead and whisk that over what's called a double boiler until it thickens up, it's gonna get foamy, the color's gonna turn pale yellow. By the way, once in a while, I like to lift up the bowl to let a little steam out so it doesn't get too hot. All right, we're not trying to scramble these eggs. And I'll guess and say that's gonna take about five or six minutes to do, but you'll know. Because when you're getting close, it will start looking like this. And for me, that's getting pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is stop filming so I don't wreck this. So I cook that for another half minute and then let me bring it over into some better and different light so you can see the final product. So that's what you're looking for right there. And at that point, it's time for the most important ingredient, the mascarpone cheese. There it is. And all that is is a very rich, incredibly delicious Italian cream cheese. And we're going to add that to our egg mixture along with some vanilla. And then you're barely going to be able to see it here. But I do want you to add a tiny pinch of salt. Maybe you saw that, maybe you didn't. But a little pinch of salt. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take our whisk and we'll mix that in very smooth. We don't want any chunks of cheese, so keep mixing it. It will mix in. And once we've accomplished that, we're going to go ahead and set that aside. And it's on to whipping our egg whites. So there's our two whites we separated. We're going to take another whisk, a totally new clean whisk. And what we're going to do is we're going to whip those egg whites until we have peaks. And pretty stiff peaks. So I'm going to go ahead and whisk those up. And at first not much happens. And then it gets foamy. And then as those millions and billions of air bubbles get suspended in the protein, it starts to thicken up and look like that. And eventually you're going to keep going until you have something that looks like this. All right, it's got to hold a peak, just like that. And then when it gets to that point, we're going to go ahead and add half to our egg and mascarpone mixture. And we're going to kind of fold that in, but it's kind of a half fold, half stir. All right, we're just lightening this up. We're not making a souffle. So while we do want it very light, we don't necessarily want it super airy. But of course, on the other hand, we don't want to knock all the air out. So we're going to be semi-gentle. And once the first half of the egg whites just barely disappear, go ahead and add the rest. And we'll go ahead and stir fold that in. And as soon as the rest of the whites are incorporated, and you have a beautiful, light, gorgeous-looking mixture like that, we are ready to build these tiramisus. So once that's set, we're ready for final assembly. And the last step would be to prep our ladyfingers. And there they are. These are nothing more than crisp little sugar cookies, and they're extremely dry, which makes them so perfect for this recipe, and you'll see why in a second. And because we are doing individual portions and not a big pan, I'm going to go ahead and cut these in half. And besides being known for the great desserts in their brothels, the Italians are also very well known for their tile work, so we're going to borrow a technique from the Italian stone masters, and I'm going to score these right in the middle with a serrated knife, which is going to let us snap them in the middle and make a nice clean break. Check it out. All right. So I'm going to prep a bunch of those and we are ready to start final assembly. So the first thing we want to do is put one spoon of our mascarpone mixture in the cup. And then on top of that, we'll put two coffee soaked halves of our lady fingers. And please pay attention. You only want to dip these briefly. You're going to put it in. You're going to turn it over a couple times and you're going to pull it right out. That's it. You do not want these over soaking. So dunk it in, give it a couple quick flips, shake it off. 
and position. That's it. And once we have that base built, we're going to go ahead and fill this up about halfway with the mascarpone mixture. And once we've done that, we'll go back to the Dunkin' and the Placin'. Only this time we're going to place them vertically around the inside of the glass. And obviously how many you use is going to depend on the exact size and shape of your cup or glass. But you'll figure it out. And I'm going to go ahead and put five in there. And then after that we'll finish with two more going across the top. And then we'll finish off all the way to the top with our mascarpone mixture. Which a lot of people call a custard. Although I think it's much closer to a mousse. But really who cares? Just call it a mixture. And once that's filled, just for old time's sake, we're going to give it the old tapa tapa. Just settle it down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and wrap those in plastic, and we're going to refrigerate that overnight. You could probably get away with as little as four to six hours, but overnight really is much better. You really want to give those flavors a chance to develop and for those crispy dry cookies to sort of absorb some of the moisture from the mascarpone mixture, which is going to soften them up and make them nice and tender and give you a beautiful, beautiful cake-like finish. So I did mine the day before. And at that point, we're going to pull them out. We're going to remove the plastic. We're going to clean up the edges a little bit. And if you're thinking, hey, those don't look as filled up as they did yesterday. It's almost as if you ate one spoon from each one. Well, it does kind of look like that, although I'm sure it's just the camera angle. But anyway, we're going to unwrap those, clean up the edges a little bit, and then finish with a very traditional, not to mention gorgeous, dusting of cocoa over the top, which is very handsome, but it's still kind of two-dimensional. So to get a little more three-dimensional, I'm going to grate a little bit of dark chocolate over the top. And for me, not only is that going to taste better, but I just think it looks way more interesting. And at that point, your individual tiramisus are done. Oh, and one quick tip. I'm sure your Valentine will be more than happy with just the tiramisu. But just in case, hedge your bets with a little extra chocolate. For example, maybe some salted caramel filled chocolate hearts. You know, just in case. In the history of Valentine's Day, no female has ever whispered into their lover's ear, thank you for dinner, but there was too much chocolate. All right, so don't be afraid to have backup chocolate. And as I dig in here, I have to say, despite the ingredient list, this is not a rich, heavy dessert. In fact, tiramisu means pick me up. And because this is so light and refreshing and contains coffee, sugar, and alcohol, it was considered the perfect restorative snack after the lovin' or before the lovin' or before and after the lovin'. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. You make something that tastes like this and looks this sexy for your Valentine's dinner dessert, you are so, so getting lots of compliments. Oh, it's true. So I really do hope you give it a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.